Good afternoon, everybody. I know I'm about as burly as it can be here. I uh, actually haven't had time to take a break, as you know, because we were up at the North Farm over the weekend, over like 24 hour period, literally, because uh, we had took seven tenths of rain down here. It quickly dried up, as it always does. And we got back, Don and I got back around one or two o'clock in the morning this morning, and we've been combining uh, since around. So, cutting lentils, still cutting lentils, we'll be cutting lentils for a little while longer because we just basically nicely got harvesting, guys. The 2023 crop year basically just started. Um, this has been happening with the X9 quite often where it has to reboot this screen. So this screen will fire up like normal and then it won't. And then it kind of just does this. And then this one, <coughs> excuse me, tells you that you have to reboot you really don't have a lot of choice in rebooting it if you would like to have this monitor back. This takes, this probably takes a couple minutes. The other problem is uh, my left rotor doesn't like to engage. Now, I, the rotor is fine. I've never taken a stone through this combine like ever. And, or plugged it ever. But there must be a sensor because it doesn't want to turn on the, sep turn on the combine. So, the separator. Once our monitor is fired up here, I'll show you. But, It really is like literally a few minutes. Don't worry, I'm not gonna burn your time up. Okay, it turned them off. Both screens are off. Had to reboot. There it goes, coming back on board. Don't worry, we'll get like we'll get combine in here sooner or later. You know, don't like it's not it's not like I got some cheap S series out there still chewing away. Okay, I won't waste your time any longer here. So it's the next day now. No. <laughs> oh man, bit of a whirlwind there. No, we're still waiting. Like, don't worry, guys. Like, oh, we're getting places. Come on. Oh, there it is. There's that thresher alarm. I guess we're gonna have to call a tech because the whole reason why we had to do the reboot. Because you know, with sensors and electronic issues, sometimes you just gotta do a shut her off, kill the battery. Most of the time, your problem will go away. Not this time. Left threshing reading zero speed may be plugged, or mechanical components may be misaligned or failed. Well, it's probably just a sensor not reading it. But either way, I acknowledge. Oh yeah, I know, we should probably calibrate the TCM. No, we want to keep this the same. There we go. Beauty, we are fully back up and operational, kind of, sort of. Okay, we get the idea. All right, we get it. Let's try to engage our separator. And there it is, our rotors are turning. Our rotor is turning, our rotor is turning. Yes, come on, keep it turning. As long as you keep them turning. 320, that's all we want. Second, you're not even gonna notice it. Three, two, one, 
What's Merry Christmas? What do you want for Christmas? What three wishes? I don't know. Talk to me. Yes, we got it. Yeah. We tricked it. See, we start talking about Christmas. Instantly threw it right off. Had no idea what we were talking about. Totally came out of that field there. All right. So I've been fighting to get this thing in combine mode for a while. And the only reason why we were not in combine mode is because uh, Ashton was here and Chapel was here. And we were at eating in the combine and spilling crumbs all over the place. And it was a very messy time, but it was so awesome. So I had to stop, let them go. They've already probably, they're already back home. We're 15 miles from home, they're already home. But by golly, we're combining again. The only problem is, is I kind of need to be. Because it took me so long. But now I can't. Because we don't dare shut anything off. We're going. Let's go. Engage our... Oh, there we go. Boy, it was barely quick enough to that one. Barely quick enough to the punch here. All right. So, we're cutting with the wind. Thank you, sir. And yes, we are on one radio line. Everybody can hear everybody, and sometimes it gets awful chattery. So these lentils are running around. Of course, I don't know if the calibines have been calibrated, but it says around 13.6. Not bad. That I'll have you know. What was it? 13.6? 13.6. That's almost 13 times better red lentil yield than what we had last year. <laughs> we got nowhere to go but up, you guys. Now, that's nowhere near average. Of course, I don't even know what average is anymore. What is average? At three years of drought, this is still not average. Believe me, we should be cutting some 25s, some 30s. We've cut up to 55 bushel red lentil crops uh, down in this area. This is not average. This is still is still classified, or rated, I should say, as a poor crop. Poor. Still very poor. But 13 times better than it was last year. Got to be thankful for that. Sample is not bad. Got a few pods, but that's perfectly fine. It's the cracked, like there's a couple broken red ones there, you see. Those are cracks. You don't want to have cracks. Cracks way up, empty pods don't. A couple of those miscolored ones would be from the rain. low spot this is the best stuff I wanted to show you guys and to prove that it's a low spot that's our yield that's not our average guys that's just in the low spot whoop de whoop de woo woo who gives a crap it's all about the average I just want to show you that it's kind of nice to cut a little something every now and then you know what I mean Oh, and I should mention that uh, I haven't calibrated this combine. So it might say 30, but it might only be 20. Or it could be 40. So give or take 10 bushel one way or the other. Mike, why don't you just calibrate everything so you know? Because I don't really care about that kind of thing. It's the same reason why I don't uh, use grain cart scales. I really don't care about it. I'm not, I'm not into weighing things in and weighing things out. Once things get to the bin, I know how much the bin holds. 
And at the end of the day, once the bin is hauled out to the terminal and I get my weight tickets and I get my check, that's what it went. As long as it's a ballpark. I would prefer to be within five bushel. If I can be within five bushel, and I can be within five bushel by guessing how much is in the bin, I can probably be within like two bushel. That's all I need. Otherwise, people get all hung up and like, oh my goodness, it's going 47. And the other guy's like, oh my combine's saying it's 48. And then really that the average is 32. Because that's what the bin said it did. <laughs> so that's why I just don't care about that kind of stuff. But you can at least see a bit of a line. And well, you should never be able to see through your see through the rows, so you know it's a poor crop. But last year we couldn't even cut it, it was so poor. Didn't even get our seed back. So obviously I'm pretty excited about this. This is like the big time for us, guys. So that's the little update. I'll be quiet here for a minute or two here. over there uh, there would be a gopher hole or a badger hole we always have to lift up over those otherwise you're just gonna scoop all that dirt and rocks in your combine and that is a no-go so this field's actually pretty good there's probably only I don't know a dozen or two of them and we just came off of one field that had a higher gopher per acre population than what the lentils yielded <laughs> and that's the sad truth we were up, down, 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 up, down. Yeah, you get the idea. And then the odd little crunch is what I'm told. And that's never good. But anyways, you guys get the idea. Just chewing down on some lentils. Mike, I think your reel's a little bit too close there. You're kind of fluffing them up. Oh, I know. I just kind of like to pre-thrash them. You know, kind of a little, uh, John Deere needs a little extra assistance. You need a little pre-thrasher going on. Kind of like what the claws combine has. <laughs> okay. All right, you guys have yourself a good one, and I will catch you on the flipper. Adios, amigos.